Every day, fishermen from the far northeast of Scotland leave port for some of the cruelest seas in the world. Theirs is the most dangerous job in Britain. Now on Chollerman, a new band of fishermen are making their mark, braving violent storms and deadly conditions. All to put fish on our plates. It's an international incident. John Buchan, skipper of the Ocean Venture, is being accused of trawling through the nets of a Spanish fisherman. Yes, no, it's clear of your nets according to the positions you've given me, unless you've given me wrong position. The position of my nets is different. Please stop over. The Spanish skipper is using fixed gill nets. Normally, he'd lay them in much deeper waters. Today, he staked his claim in the same fishing grounds as John. You give me the position of this net, the, the correct position, no. The, the position of my net is 60 degrees, 2 zero minus, 1 decimal north, 5 decimal west. This is the position approximate, approximate. That is miles from here. You give me wrong position. The Spanish nets cover 18 square miles. The skipper wants to keep John and the ocean venture well clear of them. The skipper, did you go to my tower? In five minutes, you, sorry, the nets, she knows. It's necessary, the rock, the rock. The rock is the propeller, Robert. The Spaniard means to cripple John's boat. He starts to shoot a rope from the stern of his own vessel to foul the ocean venture's propeller. Skipper, put that rope back aboard your boat. I am clear of your nets, but go by the position you give me. So put that rope back on your boat, I like so I will shoot my creeper, and I will throw a right across every net you have. Now I'm threatening you, because you're threatening me with that rope. Take that rope out of that water. No. Or else. You threaten me with that, and I will threaten you to throw every net you have on board. The rope, the rope is the propeller. Or... You give me the positions, and I am clear of your positions. So you can take that rope back and board your boat. I have positions on my chart. I am towing down clear of your nets. It's not possible. Not possible. You speak correct English. You give me wrong positions and I'm trying to keep clear of your nets. You try something like that and I will tow my creeper right through your nets. You will complain about nets after this. John decides to settle the argument. He's checking to see if there's any sign of Spanish nets caught on Ocean Ventures gear. Okay, boys. I'm heaving up my gear, Skip. I'm stand by. Plenty carbon off a big, big area at sea. He gave me positions. I kept clear these positions, and then he says I'm throwing through his nets. It's ridiculous. Trying to work with people. They want to pick up the whole sea. relations in tatters. It's time to move on. The foreign boat is back this area and the rewards aren't worth the hassle. There's plenty more fish in the sea, or so John hopes. 300 miles away in the Norwegian sector, Harmony. The 
air trawlers, sunrise and ocean dawn always work together, sharing good times and bad. Just lately, they've mostly been bad. Very bad. Failed nets, few fish and fierce gales have left skippers Ian Ritchie. Yeah, spirit the joke. And his friend John Stephen feeling a wee bit depressed. Last week, up this hell we made a, a pure top of it. Yeah. Storms forced them to take shelter in the Norwegian port of Bergen. But after 24 hours drowning their sorrows, the pair are back out and ready to chance their luck again. Skipper John's son, John Jr., has high hopes. If it ever goes to plan, we'll have a midnight date with a black attack. They're targeting Cody, or blackfish. Not quality, but quantity. That night, they reached their objective, the Norwegian oil fields. They're planning to shoot the pipe. Coley are attracted to the warmer waters around North Sea oil pipes. The skipper's plan is simple, to trawl along the pipeline. If we don't get a block of time, it's going to be very grim circumstances. Just one big haul of Coley could turn the whole trip around for the two crews. surfaces. It's clear straight away that the pipeline ambush has produced a big bag of fish. But is it enough to restore their fortunes? The Coley pipe strikes again. 100 boxes. That's the most important thing. Between two and three hundred boxes, I would say. In fact, they're both wrong. It's a whopping 350 boxes, the biggest haul of the year. There's such a huge amount of fish that the Ocean Dawn's hopper soon fills the capacity. But half the catch is still in the sea. It has to be passed to the sunrise. Time she's packed to the gunnels with black holy. Yeah, it's a big size of black as well. It's a big size of coley. It's not too small. For the first time in a long time, they've got more fish than they can handle. But that's a good haul, a nice haul. It'll make a difference in the fish room. Nice size coley. We back here now. Celebrate. <laughs> There are so many fish to gut that skipper John Stephen dons his oilskins to help the crew. Both crews will have to work all night to pack and process the catch. Ocean Venture has yet to find any fish, but John's put his Spanish spat behind him. He's got a new plan. Well, then for the Papa Monk, there's nobody been there for years, I would say, fishing, so we'll go back and see if there's any hurricanes in the go. But just a hunch, I have, I think we'll go and give it a try. It's a three hour trek to Papa Bank, 50 miles off the Shetland Islands. Will John's instinct and guesswork pay off with a big haul of haddocks? Oh, the sheer mother waste of time. Eh? It's no fresh. Not enough, is it? Eh? Enough for that tea. We're along, Steve, I think. Change your course. That's why there's no boats here, there's no fish. <laughs> Very disappointed. Plan B. Fishing can be like gambling. A game of skill and chance. 
John's new roll of the dice takes him to the edge. Literally. He's after monkfish now. Elusive, but expensive. A good haul of monkfish would be about five boxes. Even a small haul will pay for some of John's fuel. But instead of monkfish, all he's found is dogfish. The haul is next to worthless. Good. That was a complete and utter waste of time. That's two holes, and we haven't got enough. It's feed the crew. I'm a maiden, pay the fuel. We'll go and play uh, a deeper water. Plan C. It's a gamble in deep water. John's after redfish now. High value once again, but only found a hundred miles out in the Atlantic. He's already burnt 8,000 pounds worth of diesel. And there's barely a fish in the hole. Wiggy, wiggy, lads. Wiggy, wiggy. Well, you never know what will turn up when you fish in deep waters. Or so says first mate Barry Logan. And then to be in the net this depth. We're well, about 240 fathom just now fishing. And it's very deep. And you get some creatures of the deep out here, so... First a spat for the Spanish, now a haul of Argentines or poor quality silver smelt. Not John's finest hour. The trip is now £10,000 in the red, but John's still feeling lucky. Could this be his day after all? Yeah, oh, waste it, day, boys. Eh? Check out what they think of us. Two numbers in one line. Eh? No use. We'll go and cut some fish now and stay the way and lonely. The tide might just be on the turn for John. There's something big in the net. Yeah, John, you should see what's in the net. I am lucky. I've never, never seen anything like it. It's like a big jellyfish. Um, it's not get the body and spread them like that. I've never seen anything like that. I don't know what it is. It's some type of squid, I think. It's actually a rare Atlantic deep sea octopus, or Halophon Atlanticus, nearly two meters long and female. Her gelatinous body is built to withstand the enormous pressures found five miles down in the deep ocean. Their diet is simple enough crabs, sea worms, and prawns. Like the Tollerman, they lift the fish. But even a deep sea octopus won't pay Ocean Ventures fuel bill. John's fishing mission continues. For the payers, it's almost mission accomplished. With their haul of coal is safely in the hold, they've decided to chance their luck one more time with some higher value species. The weather's near perfect for fishing. Can anything go wrong? Watch these ribs. We had an engine. Look at those, bro. No ribs. Just idling, engine, just idling, that's it. Can't have any power. Yeah, Kobe Dickens. Never seen a truck like this. Never. Six years we've been together. Never been a truck like this. Never. The ship's engineer is stumped. A key bit of the computer has died. There are no spares. It's got a good haul, that last took it over. 300 bucks, the two is down. That last haul, and how this happens. This trip has just been one unlucky trip from the start of the weather. No fish. Bloody disaster. 
whole trip was covered. What's more, Sunrise will have to tow the Ocean Dawn back to Peterhead, all 200 tons of her. In the great expanse of the North Sea, most fishing boats face crises alone. With pair trawlers, at least the problems are shared. The one advantage of going here a pair team. Who knows from the three and we get a problem, I guess. Well that's one thing. Very little more can go wrong. This trip. Scratch one big part. So far we've left the harbour looking for haddocks. Then we were looking for mugfish. And then we went looking for legs. <laughs> <laughs> the Ocean Venture guzzles 2,000 pounds worth of diesel a day. After six days at sea, John needs to catch fish. Any fish. Suddenly, for the first time this trip, the catch sensor attached to the net is triggered. Trawlers before him, John finds it's the black coley to come to the rescue. That's a big, big Huge amounts of ice to keep the catch fresh. Fish famine, he's got just one plan now to catch everything he can. Then we're just going away to do the same again, I hope. <laughs> it's going to be a long day. Work in the fish room is frantic. John's looking for another massive haul. But the ice machine is on a go slow. Ah, uh, you want anyway? It's a problem, though. Get us. Three baskets of ice left. Oh, you're joking. I was cutting back nice as well. Getting three baskets instead of seven. Machines just need keeping up. We must have used about 15 tons there already. Still, it's hard to come. Oh, me, 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 me. In fishing, as in life, you can sometimes have too much of a good thing. So we're about to catch 22 position. It's logical we're going to catch more fish. And we're not going to make a lot of ice in a, in a two for another couple of hours. We're not going to make a lot of ice in two hours. I just hope that we don't catch too much fish. Eh? Yeah, we have to like a skip us here and hope that he doesn't catch too much fish. John Buchan is the victim of his own success. John Stephen on the pairs is facing failure again. Ocean Dawn has just broken free from her toe. Listen, I'm not nervous. What are they 
pushing Dylan's rail. The strain of towing has ripped away a section of Ocean Dawn's steel guardrail. If they don't get their cash to market soon, the fish they've caught will rot. It's time for a hard decision and for the pair trawlers to separate. The sunrise will leave Ocean Dawn and head home to Peterhead for help. We're going to try and catch the market, get my fish landed, and we'll go and right back out again. They're aiming to pick up a new computer part and steam back to Ocean Dawn to fix her engine. Then maybe she can land her catch before it spoils. Yet another twist to the plot. You would feel worse your sale of a tour boy that lets the thing do again. It's... Uh, gotta help it. For these weary trawlermen, the last ten days have been more like soap opera than serious fishing. In the Atlantic, Ocean Ventures' next haul is just bursting to the surface. It's massive. But the ice machine now has only one speed. Dead slow. That's not even funny, like. I don't know. What am I supposed to do with ice? It looks like they'll be forced to abandon the catch. It's going to be a long night, but we'll not dump it. Keep it all. Somehow. John's wishful thinking won't make the ice machine work any faster. Fish on the menu again. If you can't freeze your catch, you can at least start to eat it. Twenty tons more to go now. After abandoning her sister ship, the Ocean Dawn, the Sunrise has steamed through the night to get her catch into Peterhead Market. It's 8 o'clock in the morning, there's no other fish in, so hopefully we'll get good prices tomorrow. You until the ship has been a muck up. No time to lose. John wants to get back out again as quick as he can. Get them out quick and get away, Bob, out quick up here. More than half this fish is caught in one hole. The biggest hole we've had this year so far. So hopefully that'll salvage this trip. It's five in the morning, but they've managed to track down the spare part for Ocean Dawn. I see it's back. Right, something you want with come on. John doesn't even wait to hear what price his own fish gets at auction. He's doing all he can to save his fellow skipper Ian who's half of the catch. Oh, why, why help one another, right? Yes. We have to, could be me next week. Floundering in the North Sea, Ian and his crew have nothing to do but wait. John's agent calls with the price for the fish he's just landed. It's more than expected. Travels fast. Twenty-two and a half thousand, huh? <laughs> That's a big price, right? Twenty-two and a half grand. Well, the reward was a good price in the market for all the trouble we went through this trip and all the hassle. 
Oh, it was worth the injury, Mr. Stephen. I made the right decision. There's good summing out of the way up. It's a near record price for the pair trolling team. Eighteen and a half, Jeremy. See that's not the books. We do not lose. We do not lose. Well, it's the first good thing that's happened this time. <laughs> On Ocean Venture, John Buckins managed to keep his cool. The ice machines finally caught up with the monster hall. The ice machines made some ice now. Nice splash ice. Ocean Venture has caught over 700 boxes of coal in just two days. Her trip is salvaged. She can turn for home. It's taken Sunrise just 24 hours to make the 300-mile round trip back to Ocean Dawn. That's it. If the new part doesn't work, the fish in her partner's hold will spoil. Tightly in plastic, the delicate computer part is their only hope. But first they've got to chance it in the North Sea. to Ocean Dawn's engineer, Davy. of fish is a poor measure of the worth of the men who catch it. Hard work, comradeship and courage. These are the everyday currency for those who take on the North Sea as trawlermen. <laughs> 